Welcome back to Why Blank Lost for Big Brother 25. I'm David Bloomberg, and with me once again is my invisible co-host, Ovi <laughs> Kabir. Ooh, my co-host Ovi is a secret. Don't tell anyone who you are, Ovi. We're going to keep a secret through the whole podcast, Ovi. Don't give it away. I'm going to do try my best not to give it away, you know, because... It, you know, if I was an invisible person, I wouldn't want anyone to know. It wouldn't benefit my game to tell everybody. You know, I could at least, you know, uh, keep a secret for a few days, uh, find out other information, or I could just tell everyone so I can get a good laugh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think we can trust the people who are listening and watching. Yeah. So it's okay if you tell them who you are. I, I don't think they'll tell anyone. So, yeah, we can we can uh, go ahead and talk about how Jag used this amazing power to completely fool and evict Corey without him even knowing who it was. That is true. I love that first intro. You're straight in um, in hater mode right here. I know ah. we have a long podcast in front of us because this is how you're starting off, David. It's not hater. It's objective evaluation. Hate is what I out. feel for. Well, I you know, I don't hate. Very many people. Um, but there is one person who's still on the season who every time they speak makes me want to throw up. So uh, we, you know, we'll we'll figure that out. If you saw my Twitter, you know who that is. Uh, but yeah, obviously, uh, Jag's superpower had nothing to do with this eviction. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of talk about what did. But in order to truly find out, we will follow our usual path of comparing Corey's play and a bit of America's to a set of guiding rules I originally wrote in 2004 and have modified ever since. We'll analyze his actions and hers uh, using what we saw on TV, live feeds, interviews, and other information. The most recent version of the rules is posted at robhaswebsite.com slash bigbrotherrules. Now, we usually have some other things to discuss about the week in general, and we do again this week, though it's unfortunately mostly not good. We're going to have a lot to talk about with Corey, but I do want to quickly mention how disappointed and annoyed I am with the behavior of Matt, Jag, and Blue in particular. More so with the first two, because I expect it from Blue, <clears throat> which may be another hint as to who I was talking about. I, I know that it's natural for players to start talking crap about people once you've made them your target. It's a process of making them easier to vote out. Like, not only are we voting this person out, but they're a bad person. And that's mm -hmm. why we're doing it. And they don't deserve it. I, I mean, I've seen it happen in the real world with people saying things they would never normally say about others. But those people, you know, had already pissed them off. So then they started throwing everything else on them that, you know, it, it, normally they wouldn't say. But these three took it a little far. Matt was probably the worst because he seems to be this nice guy. And then every once in a while, he reminds us that he has this dickish side to him. Uh, I mean, previously, it was referencing Andrew Tate's views on women. This time, it was making a comment out of nowhere that America gave off cheating vibes. I expect that sort of thing out of Cameron, not Matt. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cameron, uh, not Cameron, excuse me, Matt is my winner pick. So mm -hmm. I've been a big fan of Matt since the beginning. Um, and I understand at this point of the game, people are trying to, I don't like it, but villainify other right. house guests in the house so they can become a bigger target. And you want to really kind of set up when you know you mm -hmm. have the target this week, you want to start setting up the target next week. So it helps to have that, um, you know, uh, propaganda spread about yes. them but the issue it kind of gets it gets a little ugly there's a fine line because i think there's a game component to it where it's you need to spread a few little rumors about them but i think at some points it crosses when he's like you mentioned saying uh, america is seen as a cheater or mm -hmm. without there's really any indication of that it just comes off really icky so yeah um wasn't a big fan of that i get what they're doing game wise but also we're gonna have to talk about down the line i think it's going to impact some things you gotta think about jury votes at this point in the game so right it's kind of one icky but also not exactly the smartest move yeah yeah if it gets back oh my gosh yeah um blue was also being nasty to america behind her back but then pretending to be her friend to her face and again like you said it's big brother that's to be expected again it just seemed to go beyond the pale it's it's one thing to you know, talk smack about people but blue just goes over the top nasty not to mention she just has such a high opinion of herself that is absolutely unwarranted. 
Um, yeah, so. I think one thing I noticed too was we really see, and I think viewers, both of the live feeds and of the show, maybe a little less so, can see though, Blue is putting on a persona on the show when she's mm-hmm. in the DRs. It's very different when you see her DR um, segments versus like when she's talking yes. just casually. And we've actually seen videos of her and like other little um, production things she's mm-hmm. done in the past where we really see her personality come out. And I really love that, Blue. I really like when she's just truly, uh, you know, just lets herself be her versus this persona she's playing on TV. And I get it. You know, there's Big Brother, the game. And then a lot of people view going on Big Brother as a platform to kind of mm-hmm. jump on to something else, which that's neither here or there. We want to see him play the game, but also we want to see them be themselves in a way that I think actually would be more beneficial to her game than the way she is doing it right now. Yeah, yeah. And then there was Jack who got oh so terribly offended that America told him to literally F off. He went and complained to Corey about it, which is it's just <laughs> terrible for two reasons. One, Corey is not her keeper. She is a full-grown adult. She's older than Corey. She is her own person. You have a problem with her, talk to her. Don't go talking to her boyfriend like he's going to control her or something like that. It was just, it was just icky in that way way not as icky as matt but icky in that way two dude you just completely blindsided her you're sending her or her boyfriend at that point out of the game maybe consider that in that moment it's not about you it's you know this is not the first time we've seen someone push on a player right after turning on them on a reality tv show i have images ingrained from other shows where people you know i mean Uh, survivor millennials versus gen x someone turns on them and immediately on the beach is like i want to explain myself i want to explain myself i want to explain myself and they're like can you just give me a moment to breathe and so you know jag reacting this way or is like i said not the first time we've seen it but every time i just don't understand how the one doing the pushing can be so clueless just let them have their space and a little time you know i'm going to uh... I agree with you in a lot of ways. I'm going to do a little pushback on this one. I think there's there's two things going on here. One, I think his like re- reaction to it afterwards was kind of like very extreme. The way Jag was, um, mm-hmm. there goes my dog. Uh, where Jag uh, essentially, you know, tries to explain this and this and this, like this is mm-hmm. why I'm upset, whatnot. But I also think there's a game element where you're trying to push somebody as much as you can, and. America, I think people agree, regardless of whether it was warranted in the real world, world, I think mm-hmm. it's warranted in the game. It just doesn't help to say F you to especially the person in power when you're in a lower position on the totem pole. And I mean, I, think- I, I don't know. My boss, uh, my old <laughs> boss used to call her boss the Wicked Witch of the West all over the place publicly. Oh, and then she got fired. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it doesn't help, you know. You, you know, and I, I'm not arguing the point that I think that uh, America isn't in the right to be able to express her feelings. And then I think Jag mm-hmm. just, like, took a little overboard in a sense. But I do think that part, like what we said, is you're trying to put a target on somebody. She really gave the ammo he could have used. I, yes, I thought it was weird. I think it was a weird thing going on in the house where they look at Corey as like being controlled by America and Corey is kind of a good uh, natured mm-hmm. person. Uh, Jag and Matt view that and then America is the kind of the corrupter. That's where it gets icky for me. But I will say I think this was good ammo uh, against America for Jag to be able to kind of use. We'll see how it plays long term. Yeah, I mean, I loved seeing her do it because it was what she felt and yeah. they deserved it. I wasn't you know, that in the moment. I I have yes. Should she have done it for her long term? Eh, probably not. But the thing is, the thing that you know, like you said, him reacting to it, like no one had ever said the f word to him in his whole life before. Like, oh my ears, <laughs> yeah, you know, and and then just you know, like we need to talk right now. No, you don't. You've got like four days before. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just calm yourself. Let her take it in and it's not about you in this moment Jack. yeah and uh, f you in the real world though is very different in f you in the i feel like at that point all your feelings are so bottled up you yeah. know and now there's like just a level of the, mm-hmm. the you're finally saying what you've been trying not to say so right. now the floodgates have opened so yes. all the motions on both sides are now it's a free-for-all yeah. so um and i think we saw that the fallout through these episodes this week yeah. with that as well yeah 
And then the last thing that I have here is we had Bowie Jane crying <laughs> because, and this is going to shock you, Obi, there were lies in the Big Brother house. Lots of lies. People lying. And so just when I had started to give her a little credit that she, maybe she was actually playing the game, she goes and shows, no, she really has no idea. After two and a half months, Bowie Jane is still so upset and shocked that there are lies in Big Brother. I'm going to laugh one day um, if the way it works out is Bowie Jane gets in the final two and yeah. everyone at this point has been pissed off enough against Jag that we give Bowie Jane is the, the winner of the no lies game of Big Brother. So and she will create a new meta that she will win the game with no lies. And then, David, we're going to have to do a whole segment about that. Oh, God. This, yeah, this is I, how the karma is going to turn right now. I point. don't think so. I don't see it happening. I mean. It's Big Brother. Almost anything could happen, but I I can't imagine a world where that happens. Uh, is there anything else you want to discuss uh, about the players before we move on here? No, I mean, I think one thing, you know, I think we'll talk about it within it, but this specific part isn't within the rules. I think it was very interesting. We saw a showman's. Uh, like Corey and America for this, like them both being very strategic head mm -hmm. people. I find like most showmances we've seen in the past, we have one person lean towards the strategic side and one, uh, I, I think we see a uh, competition guy and incredibly smart girl pair up many times. Mm -hmm. We see this versus this one. I think we saw both people being very, what they're, you know, game mind strategic. And so we just saw from that element, I'm not talking about the showmans themselves, right. the characters. I enjoyed both of them. I like mm -hmm. America and Corey and I hope, you know, Pat the show and past the show, they do well, but I thought it was interesting because we really don't see a duo like that. Where it's both people really trying to are um, strategic minded and trying to plan ahead. And so that was kind of a fun element that I will be missing going forward yeah yeah now whether they were successful or not we'll talk about in a couple minutes here um yeah normally now it would be time for our julie chen moonves is wrong about blank segment but this time eh, she didn't say anything terribly off kilter in her entertainment weekly interview um you know she did screw up the intro to the thursday episode but people can see my tiktok about that if you didn't notice it at the time um, so before we get to the rules, I do want to mention that the survivor version of them come in a shorter and much more colorful, uh, form, uh, in poster, go to Rob has a website.com slash YX lost feeds, scroll down to the poster and click on it and order. In addition to the poster, we also have the poster on a t-shirt and of course the checklist, which, you know, the rules here are very similar to the big brother rules, not quite identical, but very similar. Uh, and so you can go click on any of those and order them. Again, Rob has website.com slash YX lost feed, or just look above Ovi's head for that uh, URL. <laughs> All right. Well, as Corey was being evicted, the show told us it was all America's fault. Jag told us it was America's fault. America told us it was America's fault. But was it really her fault? Corey refused to blame her and said that he'd been a target for weeks. Was he just protecting his girlfriend or does he have a good point? And if he is right, what caused him to be a target to begin with? It's time to figure out why Corey lost. Normally, we would start with rule one. But in this particular circumstance, it makes more sense to just jump to the second rule first. Uh, now, that rule says not to scheme a plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. The secret part is certainly an issue here, both for Corey and America. Now, let's start with the issue that almost everybody is blaming as the reason for Corey getting evicted. And that is America spilling too much information to Blue. Now, obviously, this did happen. America was incredibly foolish to do it. And I don't say that lightly. It's one thing to make a mistake in Big Brother. It happens. But America has made the same mistake over and over and over again. And Corey has explained it to her over and over and over again. Why, you know, telling her why she shouldn't do it. And she has seen the consequences over and over and over again. And yet she still kept doing it. She still, she kept saying, she's sorry, she's sorry. But for literally the whole game, Corey kept warning her about oversharing information and she just would not listen. She 
wouldn't need to apologize so much if she had learned from the first dozen or so times. Now, I know it's a little strange. A little while ago, I said, well, Corey's not the controller of her. Why are you, you know? And so, yeah, in this case, he wasn't trying to control her. He was giving her, you know, they like you said, they're both gamers. He was explaining to mm -hmm. her the game of it all. But she was like a toddler who kept touching a hot stove. You know, even after being told not to. And yeah. occasionally she'd get a minor burn. But this time her whole game caught on fire. Yeah, I think this is kind of the catch-22 when you're in a showman, right? You have the power of having essentially two votes in one, mm -hmm. two, um, you know, advocates for an issue within one, you know, a group. But the issue is, is that your actions will be completely impacted by the other person. So we found many times, and I, again, I'm, this is going to be for me, I, I'm going to focus a lot on core. I think both of us will focus mm -hmm. on Corey and this stuff, but yeah. America plays a component where she really was kind of negatively impacting Corey's game in a way because she was playing a game, which I don't even disagree with was she was playing kind of an individual game. And many times when we really know blue does not care much for Corey, that's been proven that's yeah. shown the track record, but she wants to create an ally. She's creating a ship, which again, I don't think in nature is the worst thing to have mm -hmm. a getaway car, you know, yeah. that when the Corey showman, like sinks she's still able to continue to play the game but i found it a little bit too early in many ways and a little too much information i mean mm -hmm. here's the thing is that uh, Corey truly uh, and i think you know i want to we get so far in the game at this point multiple weeks in and we saw Corey start at kind of ground zero ground negative one if we remember him coming into the house because mm -hmm. he came in essentially one of four people on the block so what I'm interested in is I think there was a lot of great ways that his game was within the show match. They had power, but I also think his game completely changed when he became viewed as a duo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll both have plenty more to say about that as we go on. I'm sure now America herself said, I know this had nothing to do with Corey. He's such a good player. He's always so careful with his words and I'm not, and I feel so sloppy. And she wasn't even talking about kissing. Uh, she said, I'm the worst player ever. I should have known better. Now, I will say, America, you're not the worst player ever. Not by a long shot. Not even this season. Not even this month. But <laughs> yes, she should have known better. Now, I have a few examples here. Uh, weeks or months ago, Corey explained to America that she couldn't tell the others that she trusted Jag. But she kept now this was like I said, this was a while ago. Um, you know, she kept not only telling people, but would hang out with him all the time, too. Uh, later, Corey told America about the Seven Deadly Sins Alliance. She immediately started talking or asking Jag about it, even though or even telling him that she heard it from Corey. Then Jag turned around and told Izzy. Izzy told Corey, mm -hmm. you know, the whole thing was a big circle. You might think this would have told her or, or taught her, don't tell Jag stuff. But no, she kept telling him everything that Corey would tell her to the point that at one time Corey got so frustrated, he told Izzy, my mistake is telling America anything. America's mistake is being America. <laughs> but wait, there's more. We're, we're selling kitchen knives here. Um, <laughs> weeks ago, America finally realized she probably couldn't trust Blue because information had leaked. Meanwhile, as you mentioned, Blue had also been gunning for Corey. So you might think that those two important things would cause America to maybe pause on sharing information with her. But no, she was still doing it, which led up to this point. And I, I, it's, it's like you said, you know, she was looking for a, another ally. And she thought that she was doing Blue a favor, which would kind of ingratiate her. Now, I don't know why she would want to do blue a favor other than what you mentioned but several other people tried telling blue about the situation and blue wouldn't listen they told blue she was the target she's like no 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 as uh kirsten mckinnis said on last sunday's live feed recap you can't really use logic on someone like blue and i think that sums it up perfectly you know, I mean, really, she goes totally with her feelings, ignores logic. I mean, how many people have to tell you something and you still go, no, nope, that's no, nope, that's not it. America went into more detail, which is you know where she got into more trouble. 
not to mention, she was talking about the HOH, basically throwing the HOH under the bus before the veto comp had even happened, which is not smart at all. She should have just let it happen. And instead, it showed no good deed goes unpunished in Big Brother. I think this season is a very difficult season in a way of information sharing, getting back to people, because we see there are so many connections, right? We mm-hmm. go back to Sari and the whole com- Sari and company, right. you know, you have Jerry, Jared and her connection. So in the beginning of the game, you have um, Corey incredibly close with Izzy and that being his connector, but without realizing she's already now bonded with Sari mm-hmm. and Jared. So you have this information train that really does not stay with just one in one person within all groups is truly flowing i mean even with the mother and son duo you saw information flowing right. else even when they told each other it would yeah. go elsewise so we saw unfortunately Corey uh be the victim of this type of nature of the game but i also want to put there some level of autonomy right that Corey has that it's not just on american other people too in this game it's that Corey has to be at some point to make the decision that, hey, how much information can I share to the people that I'm even closely working with? Mm -hmm. I think we see this um, within this overplaying hand is that Corey probably was if he was able to set a personal boundary with him and America, we might have been able to see him play a game a little differently where his moves wouldn't be overplaying because his moves would have just been himself. Right. Um, and I'm just not to say he would have played a perfect game, and I don't want to negate the good impacts that his showmance has had in the game, but I think by this time, it's very evident that every move they kind of made um, was overplaying because it was seen as, you know, even though it's two separate people, it's seen right. as the person making that move. Right. And, you know, so that's, I mean, that's really where we find ourselves, you know. Okay, America did a lot of things that led up to the worst decision she made. But did her telling Blue that information directly lead to them being nominated. Was it the cause? Now, it's impossible to say for sure. It seems likely that Jag and Matt would have arrived at this decision anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, they should have as soon as Jag won Invisible HOH. It was the perfect opportunity to do it. Corey knew it. America knew it. Felicia knew it. uh, Sari knew it. I'm pretty sure even Bowie Jane knew it. But Jag and Matt didn't, and the light didn't go on for them until Blue told them what happened. With a great deal of coaching from Sari of Blue that wasn't shown on TV, of course. So Blue gets all this credit for this move that really was Sari in the background, you know, being the puppeteer. So when America said she felt like, you know, such an idiot because they were in a good spot until she gave information to Blue... That's not really true. Mm. Um, And and, you know, because it it could have happened anyway, it most likely would have happened anyway. You know, this isn't a choose your own adventure book. You can't go back and see, oh, what would have happened if I hadn't said that? Let's see what path we would have gone down. But, you know, I think the likelihood is that they would have figured it out. And part of that is. They weren't in the good spot that she thought because most of the house has seen Corey as an over schemer since like day Mm -hmm. one or two. You know, you mentioned he came in in a bad spot because he was one of the four nominees. But worse than that, I mean, the very first note that I had uh, remaining in my 34 pages that started today was from the first or second day. It said Jared and Sari were most worried about Corey and Sari even called him a snake. This is day one or two. They Mm -hmm. just met Corey. They barely knew him. And already he's a snake. Now, Corey spoke to Sari alone to, you know, later to try and smooth things out and explain where he stood. And I I just don't think that view of him ever really left. Um, Others said similar things like Heisem told Felicia. There was no doubt in his mind that (laughs) our little friend Corey is running his effing mouth. Uh, and that Corey wanted Sari out because he's watched Survivor. Even though we knew Corey wanted no such thing. Corey wanted to play with Sari and then knock her out at like Final Five or something like that. Um, Heisem added that Corey watched Big Brother religiously with his family and they all watched the live feeds together. Oh, the horror. But the point is, from the very beginning, he was seen as, you know, that archetype. He yeah. came in as the schemer of the season. I think it's rightly said because I think 
and I, I think this is kind of a funny thing to say that there's a uh, unfortunate bad stereotype of young white men when they come into this show. Yeah. But um, when you have like a guy coming out of college, and I speak for myself, coming mm-hmm. out, you just are viewed to as just you're going to be incredibly smart, they view or schemer when it might not mm-hmm. even be true at all. In my case, it wasn't true. Um, and you have, yes, like, you were, you were the <laughs> schemiest schemer ever. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I think I had Corey's fault of telling too many things to other people as well um and i think though in this case we see kind of a disadvantage for Corey, where he's really trying to play an uphill game where uh, there's this view of him that okay why is he being cast you you look at everyone who's in the room they come in they're like you're cast for this you're cast for this you of course they're archetypes right but mm-hmm. you got to think of what they can match and so right. the easiest one to match to Corey was he must be a genius. He must be a young genius. And I don't, and I think that unfortunately because of past winners like Steve and Ian, it has reinforced that stereotype Mm -hmm. of just, you know, that person. You have also Michael from this last season who was kind of more of a competition beast and all around, you know, thing, but you have this view of these guys coming in here who are young guys and they're like, Hmm, can't trust him. So even though Corey wanted to shake that stereotype and that level of archetype that he did have, we just saw it was ingrained in everybody's, you know, like mind said, I can't truly trust Corey because I know he's going to try backstabbing. Even though Corey's like, I just want to play with y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, the, another example, Felicia has been constantly anti Corey. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, even as, you know, going back to the pressure cooker. As soon as some of her people came out, she was like, we got to get rid of him. He's too smart. Uh, you know, he, he. there's no way he's a 21-year-old college student. He's lying. I don't care what he said, you know. And it's just like, what did he do to you, you know? Uh, he even said that. It was funny when he said it uh, at the end um, when he was interviewed by Julie. He's like, and Felicia was against me. I, I still, you know, I don't know why. Um, but. Yeah, I think it's just this impression that, Mm -hmm. you know, people have. And that assumption that Corey was lying all the time just continued. Almost every time Corey lost a competition, everybody's like, oh, he threw it. He threw it. And yeah, did he, you know, throw a couple? Probably. But like he told Julie when he came out, he's like, yeah, my and America's problem was, you know, we couldn't win comps. And it's like, I don't think he would have said that if he had thrown every comp, you know. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, the assumption he was playing everyone also continued again, getting back to Felicia. She kept spreading that he was on all sides the whole game, pitting everyone against each other. Uh, He was the same as Cameron without winning comps. Uh, Even this week, one excuse Jag used was that Corey and America were 100 percent with everyone right now. Which doesn't even make logical sense because he also previously said the whole house was against Corey, which is why they'd want to keep him around. Apparently, Corey is magic. He can both have everyone with him and against him at the same time. Uh, But logic was not involved here. People just had this image of Corey that never went away. Yeah, and I just always think back with the conversations where McCole and him would have where there was a point in the game where truly Corey was one of the only few house guests that was checking on McCole um, and just trying to keep a relationship going. And Corey had a system. He would wake up and he's like, you know, I need to spend at least a certain amount of time with each person. And he, he even talks about it, which again, at the core, it's not really wrong. You know, I have a whole calendar list where I have my friend's birthdays on there who are close to me. And when it pops up, I'm like, oh, send him a happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's methodical. But it's methodical because you want to make sure you don't miss those people right. who are around your life. It's not, a, you know, an engineered way to like, oh, I need to, you know, do this and this. Um, same way for Corey. He understands he gets part of the game. But also it's like, I want to check in on my allies. But the viewpoint from uh, McCole was that. I know what Corey's doing. He is every day taking time out of his day, checking on me for mm-hmm. 15 minutes. So that way we're good. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was really interesting because Corey just wanted to work with Nicole a lot, but it just wasn't at all shared in the same way. So we found these things where really Corey was going through with good faith nature. And I know we're speaking a lot of positives. We're going to talk about some things, you know, that mm-hmm. uh, didn't go as right for him. But in these cases, I feel like I can't hold against Corey when, Certain uh, house guests just don't want to work with him just because of the way they view him. Yeah. Or nothing he controls. Yeah. 
Um, and now, you know, you wanted to uh, you, you wanted to uh, get to the negatives, um, you know, you already mentioned this somewhat, uh, you know, about Corey telling the truth way more than he should have. And it's funny because he really did. And yet somehow the house guests believed he lied way more mm -hmm. than he did. He said things straight out that he never should have, but he was still seen as sneaky. Uh, again, uh, just a few examples. He talked to people who were not his allies, like Blue, about those he might want to target. Like, you know, talking about Cameron when Cameron was mm -hmm. the HOH. Even worse, several times he told the HOH, like Cameron and Bowie Jane, that he felt perfectly safe. It's presumptuous. It can make them feel like you're taking advantage of them. And other times he laid out all his plans. Like when he told Bowie Jane that he had told Sari and Felicia, uh, Felicia that he'd have to go after Matt and Jag, but not yet. And he was even honest with Jag about saying that. That gave them the opportunity to know when to go after him. Mm -hmm. Another common thing he'd do was being over honest in his strategic conversations, like telling people that a plan was good for him, but maybe not them. No, no, just no. Let them figure it out for themselves. It felt like he assumed like they were playing chess mm -hmm. and everyone could look at the chessboard the same way he did and be like, oh, yeah, you know, my rook is about to knock out your bishop, you know, but this isn't chess. It's hidden. And not everybody has the same mind he has. And he took away his own strategic advantage by basically coaching them. Yeah, no, I mean, that was the unfortunate part that I'm truly impressed with Corey in so many ways. And I just feel like when you come into the game with this level of archetype, yes, you have to try play a lay low game in ways, but at some points when you when people keep giving you the um, – what's the word? The evidence in front of you that they're not going to work with you or they're not going to be able to play. You need to lean into it. I wanted Corey to go into evil mastermind, and that's really why – and I think that's tough, right? Corey's a really young guy. It's tough to break out of your nature and like pivot when you're that early, especially you're worried about how you're going to be viewed by TV. Your family's watching. There's a lot mm -hmm. more stressors, I feel like, when you're younger. More than anything, I don't think you're completely comfortable or confident. I, I think any very few like young 20-year-olds will tell you that or – they might not tell you now, but later on, I'll be like, I didn't know what was going on in my life at that point. Like, I was just, you know, and I, I speak for myself that you just mm -hmm. haven't found yourself in a way. So it's very difficult to kind of like pivot or like lean into and be like, you know what? I'm going to be evil in this game and take these folks out. I'm going to use their insecurities, turn it around on them. And, and I feel like Corey had a capability to do that. But like you said, he was just really kind of coaching some folks and be like, here, this is how it should be going. It's kind of like mm -hmm. when you play uh, cards with your friend who doesn't know how to play, right? right? You're going to figure out a way to play easy with them. Or if you're playing, you're trying to teach them how to play poker or whatnot. You're not going like this. You're not going to just try crushing them on the river. You're trying to tell them how it goes. And you, you, you're happy to lose a hand because you're like, we're playing for fun. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the other players were not playing for fun. They were playing for blood to get Corey out. And it took so many soldiers. One by one by one, they fell um till he got there yeah i mean it's like when i would you know teach my sons games when they were younger and it's like uh, uh, like going back to chess like okay if you make that move see what can happen here mm -hmm. but you know at some point uh, you know especially you know my older son uh they got better than me <laughs> and you know there were some games that we played that i could never win i remember there was a game where you move pieces and they had mirrors on them and there was a laser bouncing off and you had to get the laser. And <laughs> I, I don't know that I ever won that game. I needed yeah, him yeah. to coach me, you know, and, and, um, you know, but that was the thing. At some point you gotta, you know, he was not there to teach these people how to play big brother, but he, and it wasn't even that he was doing it intentionally. He just, seemed to assume that they saw the same thing he mm -hmm. did, that they had the same logical mind. Like, well, of course, you know that I'm going to do this. So therefore, and and 
if we could have read their minds, they'd be thinking, well, I didn't know that you were going to do that, but thanks for telling me, <laughs> you know, because yeah, someone like Matt, he doesn't think that way. Someone like Jag, he probably was thinking the wrong way. Someone like blue, you know, uh, minor spoiler of the live feeds here she's revealed she's a brand strategist and she's a super strategist yeah blue you're not a strategist and you know and, and so it's you know telling her information same thing so so yeah he just he was too honest and yet with all this over honesty they still made up ridiculous conspiracies about him like felicia Still, I think to this day, does not believe that Jared revealed the brown sugar babes to him. <laughs> this was weeks after Jared was gone. It didn't matter anymore. And yet she still says, oh, Corey's lying about that. Uh, even, you know, very much recent here, after Jag double backdoored Corey in America this week. America, you know, after, you know, whatever, went to her room and her bed and was crying. Corey asked Jag to talk so he could find out what happened. But right away, and we saw this on TV, or at least part of it on TV, people like Matt and Felicia were saying, oh, there he goes, already mm -hmm. campaigning against his girlfriend. It's like, no, he just wanted to talk. It is possible to just talk, but not for him. It, it You know, it, it's, it's funny because uh, when I just recorded the Survivor Why Blank Lost, and... Um, uh, uh, my co-host for that, Jessica, was mentioning that, you know, sometimes when you're walking with someone on the beach, you're not scheming with them. You're just talking to them. Yeah. And the same thing's true in Big Brother. So you can just talk to people, but not him. Anything he did, it, you know, that he was he was scheming. You know, he, he was plotting. Now, the one time when Corey really should have been more straightforward he wasn't leading up to the double eviction. Corey had indicated to blue that if he won HOH, uh, he'd put up Jared and someone else. And then it actually happened. He won HOH. He asked her if she would be okay going on the block. She said, obviously she didn't want to. Uh, he, he got her to promise that if he didn't put her on the block, she wouldn't use the veto. And he said, okay, I trust you. Then he went and talked to everyone else, and they're like, no, 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 do it. And he did it. Now, I said way back at the time, you handled this poorly, Corey. You should not have done this. Either you should have prepared her for the fact that she was going on. At the very least, you should not have asked her these questions, said I trust you, and then nominated her anyway. Everyone else agreed with him. Everyone else was on board, but he was the HOH, so he took the blame. And she has been complaining about it ever since. Even going on now about how, oh, now they see what it's like being up against their showmance on the block. She was on the block against Jared for like half an hour. <laughs> you know, like, don't act like it was some huge emotional roller coaster. It happened and it was done. Now, it could be that no matter how he handled that move, Blue would have still been very anti-America and Corey. But in those few moments, he really, he, he handled it in the worst way possible. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I've viewed Blue in the game a lot of ways as, um, I'm trying to think of the right word about this. Bad. But as, <laughs> That's my as, right word. As a component of, I'm going to try to be nicer, that people could utilize, a person, an ally that they could use to have on their end. Because we've seen for a while, Blue was actually very anti-Jared at moments where she was ready to turn on him. And that didn't last long. I know that. Yeah. But that was never harnessed by the other side. Right. You know, that week where Corey had that double elimination, double eviction, um, there was a good ability that he would have had to, even though he's evicting Jared, turn blue in some shape or form and come a true ally to himself and he was unable to do that because he kind of misplayed that whole situation i will give him a little um grace because that was i think if i remember correctly, the only time he has won a competition yeah. so i think the whole adrenaline hit him he wasn't sure how to do it i mean it comes down to the end of the day like he they didn't win enough competition mm -hmm. to have as much power as they did if anything is impressive they had as much power without winning competitions in a house that's kind of full of 
kind of competition beast. No one yeah. has, other than Sari, not won any competitions now outside of the American Corey group, right? I mean, has she um, Amer- did I... America win anything? America She's gotten second in a lot of stuff. She, she has goes... not won. I thought she won one veto, but I could be wrong. I don't remember. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's when you say it's a lot of competition beasts, it's the same. It's the, you know, muscular, well, somewhat muscular male. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's 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 just so ridiculous how it has become so physical. And I know almost every Big Brother podcast has talked about this. So we don't we don't need to harp on it anymore. But let yeah, me just yeah. say for the record, it, production, you you screwed it up. So. Um, now, I have uh, one more thing for this rule uh, before I move on. I don't know about you, but it might or might not have been important, but it actually relates to what we were just talking about, because on Tuesday's episode, we saw the veto competition and America wondered to us, do I really need to win this? Probably not. And then she let go to fall off the spinning discs in third place. Now, Jag and Blue held on for a lot longer, so it is very possible she wouldn't have won anyway. I wonder if deep down this is part of what she's been apologizing to Corey for without telling him like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is my fault. Knowing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also purposely fell off when I maybe could have won. I mean, yeah, that, that's actually a really good plan to even think about that part of it. I think that was the issue is that at some point, like you need to win competitions, especially vetoes. I don't think at this stage of the game, you should be throwing vetoes when you are in a showman's mm-hmm. one and two, you're already at the end there. You, you can still play for veto week in and week out. You know, HOH is one of the ones that I still would argue right. that it's important to win. The only person who probably doesn't need to win an HOH at this point is like Bowie Jane. Cause I don't think mm-hmm. she's in danger of it. But she might want to win the game, so she might want yeah. to win an HOH. But I think in those situations, we just saw that, like you said, I think the whole basis of this rule for us, we've kind of covered this, is probably our longest segment we've ever had for rule number two. Mm-hmm. But I think is that they overplayed in so many times that they really didn't need to as a showman, but underplayed at points when they really needed those. They needed some clutch, crucial moments, and he didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah. And I probably is the longest for rule two because we were basically talking about two people. Um, now we can, you know, kind of flip and go back to the first rule, which is, of course, the scheme and plot. And you just said, I mean, we just got to talk about them overdoing it or at least being seen as overdoing it. We obviously know they did or he did indeed scheme. Not nearly as much as people thought. But he was fully capable of it. I I think the best single example of this was when he flipped the house against Izzy, went toe to toe with Jared to expose all his lies and alliances. And then, as he told Mike Bloom, literally the next week, Jared won HOH and I was able to make it through that with all the relationships I had formed. So he really did an excellent job there. We thought Jared was or at least I thought Jared was going to come right back at him and knock him out. And instead, Jared was like, nah. It's okay. You're good. Yeah, no, we we saw Corey really go toe to toe. And what I loved about Corey was he wasn't really scared of confrontation. He didn't mind confrontation, but he just didn't enjoy like there's certain points where if he didn't see it was usable and like he could utilize it, it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right. We have that uh, whole time with um, uh, was it uh, Felicia? basically going railing in was it felicia oh right yeah felicia yes. railing at him and he's like i'm i'm just not going yes his bass rope yeah, he yeah i'm not gonna battles. get sucked into this if, if you want to come play pool or we'll yeah pool, exactly you know. and we but we saw him hold his ground against jared when he was like hey these are lies you're telling mm-hmm. i need to ensure that your lies are shown to the whole you know game and i think that works really well when you have people around you who trust logical and rational, you know, arguments. But when a house, when even it's, it's one of those things where like, even if the house knows the truth, they're not going to believe it. They're going to right. or like, they're going to choose it because it's not better for their game. So the truth doesn't matter right in the game of big brother. All that matters is that what helps your level of game and ship go to yeah. the next level. And yeah. so we just saw Corey try to scheme and plot in many ways, which it was uh, like you said, uh, beneficial to him, but at many times it was him kind of 
thrown against a wall that wasn't going to move. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I could say in general, he did well here. Earlier in the game, he kept trying to, you know, kind of stay in the middle so as not to rock the boat. And he did get himself in with a number of different allies. He, you know, tried in vain to get people to stick to the plan when the house was in a flip-flopping tizzy in the beginning weeks. But he never fought so hard as to get himself in real trouble. But a couple problems arose. One, we already mentioned. He was seen as over-scheming far more than he actually was. The other was that as America and Corey got more serious, he didn't have his head in the game and therefore didn't quite realize what other people thought of him. And things only got worse after the zombie twist because he kind of just went along with the TV schedule. Up, oh, there's not going to be a vote this week. I don't need to do. You know, and he just sits back mm -hmm. and... He, he he got too comfortable. Um, you know, I mentioned he had said that to a couple of the HOHs, even that he was comfortable in in uh, his brother Zach's recent interview with Rob. He said that Corey with a very clear goal is good at making it happen. But when he doesn't have one, he goes all over the place. And that really seemed to be the situation here. Or I, I mean, it wasn't when he needed to flip the house. He made it happen when he didn't really need to do anything. He really didn't do anything and he just kind of lost the plot yeah i mean we just saw that i think it's a really good way you put it that i didn't get to he see that interview where he needs to have a goal in mind i think mm -hmm. we saw that a lot we saw that fire in him for different times especially in the beginning game but i think we saw a bit of a tired and beaten down Corey near the end game and the reason why the game is so long right yeah so many weeks it takes such a mental toll on you and again i don't like keep harping on the fact of this but i think when you're younger right you have a lot of life experience to kind of back you know yourself up on you know those you mean when you're older yeah you yes when you're older. oh yeah when you're older you have those mm -hmm. situations but when you're younger you don't so when you're younger i feel like there's a lot of less stressful situations usually that you have had to have in your life that you can always draw upon mm -hmm. when you're older when you i think most people life experience comes with that ability to be like you know what? It's bad now, but I remember when it was worse, you know? So in those hard times and those struggles, you can really uh, find a level of power. So remember that, like, hey, there's an end to the end of this tunnel. And I know it's very easy to say, like, hey, this game is for 750K. Why right. are all these house gets being, you know, focused in? Mm -hmm. It's a social experiment. That's the reality of right. it. When you're there for one third of a year, essentially, your mind flutters. I mean, that's why it's so tough. Because yeah. it's so long, it's a social experiment. And so I think for Corey, we just kind of see that saw that get to him by this time because he was in there for so long. Yeah, I have some more thoughts on that in a different rule. But yes, absolutely. Um, now, one particular place that even Corey acknowledges he went wrong in terms of scheming was in the Nicole versus Felicia vote. He should have wanted Felicia out for a number of reasons, not least of which was no matter how much he helped her, she always wanted him gone. Uh, plus, as he noted in postgame interviews, keeping Mimi would have uh, had a more threatening person in the house to shield him somewhat. But he thought it would be good to save Felicia. So he started having conversations. And in his mind, he convinced everyone. What really happened was Matt, Jag, and Cameron realized it was bad for him. So they pretended that... Oh, my gosh, you 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 convinced us. Yeah, we're oh, my gosh, we're on your board. Uh, perhaps even funnier was that Corey wanted to make sure Felicia knew how much blue pushed to get her out and that he basically saved her. And even that for the second time, saving Felicia would not change her mind about him. No, I mean. They were dead set. They were dead set. And yeah, again, that's what I say is that when you're scheming, plotting, you have to be able to play not the level of other people, but at the same perspective of other right. people. Right. There's no point of trying to convince them of rational and logical decisions if they're not willing to accept that. Right. If not willing to see that, hey, this is how the game board looks right now. This is how the game pieces are going to move. And this is how I'm going to move to support you. And they're like, oh, no, you're going to go in a zigzag. That move yeah. doesn't – that that piece can't yeah. move like that. You know? Yeah. They, they don't want to accept that. And, again, I'm not saying that as a way that Corey is the end-all, be-all and knowledge mm -hmm. of it. But there are so many situations, objectively speaking, that you have mentioned multiple times where we see Corey has been in a – good way that would benefit both their games and is benefiting both their games mm -hmm. but the other house guests decides to ignore that yeah
Now, one final thing I want to discuss here in this rule is his situation relative to Bowie Jane. Now, Taryn has talked about this several times recently in different podcasts, but basically in Corey's mind, he was solid with Bowie Jane. In her mind, not so much. Uh, the two had very different opinions on where they stood, and it goes back to what you just said about perspective. He thought that they were one way. She thought that they were another. He thought they'd talk strategy and that he told her important information and he wanted her in the final three. She didn't feel like he'd actually done or said any of those things. And from what we could tell, she's right. He just had a full misread of the situation there. Yeah, I think the viewpoint was that Bowie Jane wasn't too close to anybody in the house, honestly. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if we give her a little bit, she's going to be close to her. And I think, you know, I know we joke and have jokes about Bowie Jane, but she is a player in the game in the sense that mm -hmm. she, she's her own person. She's own. Right. She's going to have her own thoughts. You can't just treat her like she's some, you know. I mean, Cameron tried that and look where it got him. Exactly. You, you. She, I think, if anything, I think Bowie Jane hates the most when lies is one, but also to be underestimated. Because well, I think being underestimated or left out. She yeah. wants to be a part of whatever is happening. Yeah. And I think that is a very understandable feeling because mm -hmm. as humans, we all want that. And especially for Bowie Jane, she's a very accomplished uh, woman outside of that Big Brother house. She has right. a lot of things. She's a barrister in her own merit. 32 years in her yes. 32 years yes yeah. um give or take yeah. but regardless yeah. of that somebody of that pedigree they're not going to want to feel like they're being left out of situations and so mm -hmm. for Corey, um it's one of those tough things because at this point numbers you know subtract so much and if you look on paper bowie jane's probably not somebody who's going to be lasting the whole time in the house but she has lasted this long right. uh so Corey just didn't way enough relationships in that and with, with her early off in the game that can be built upon yeah i mean it's like you know the whole final three thing in his mind they were you know good for a final three in her mind she was like well that's news to me you mm -hmm. know I, I don't know when that ever happened i mean heck nicole called it out and <laughs> bowie jane still didn't know it happened so <laughs> all right we can go to the third rule which talks about the need to be flexible now I know you sometimes take a different view of this rule than I do, saying people need to have their flexibility challenged in order mm -hmm. to show how they do here. So what are your thoughts on Corey in this regard? Man, I mean, I think we it's, – it's tough because it's a, such a long game, and I see Corey's game kind of having a two-parter pre uh pre showmance and an after showmance mm -hmm. um and the reason i say that is that i think beforehand his flexibility was really pushed to the driven you know pushed to the end because we saw him being challenged and we saw him how he kind of moved and swayed to the game i mean he single-handedly where i think he should have been the number one target that first week when it was those four people on the block he somehow escaped that damage. Mm -hmm. He had somebody who was literally a powerhouse of a high some just gunning for him for no reason the first four weeks. Um, he gets them out. We have other people, his closest ally, who he feels turns on him easy. He's able to get the knife in their back before they get him. He has made so many moves where he shifts, you know, different things. And I think he played that middle for so long, so well, that he was able to, one, create a, a true friendship before a relationship with America when she was on the other side of the house, essentially, than him. So we see Corey truly navigate the house in a beautiful way. And then the showmance happens. And again, yes. I'm not saying the showmance is the end of his game, but the issue that happened was then he became, I think it's like real life, right? When you're younger, when you aren't in a relationship, when you're not married, right? You can travel here. You can go here, this and that. But when you have a family dynamic, you got to start planning things months mm -hmm. in ahead. When your boys call you up, you can't just say, I want to take a weekend trip with you. You got to figure that out. You know, three, four months, who's going to watch the kids? What's going to happen here? Life changes, and I think that happened in the Big Brother house for Corey, where he was less flexible when he was in that show mess because he wasn't playing for one but for two. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I do think he had some flexibility problems early. Uh, like he he came in planning to play like the little brother who needs help with everything, but that plan changed quickly, and I'm not entirely sure intentionally when he saw like Sari. And the problem was, whether he was being flexible or not, it changed for the worse because his knowledge came pouring out. And instead of being the innocent, he was presumed guilty of being sneaky just because he was a super fan. 
And so, you know, was that flexible? Well, I, I think it was just a reaction. And he wasn't, I guess you could say he wasn't flexible enough to stick with what his original plan was, despite what happened, you know. Another example of him not handling flexibility in the greatest way was his reaction to the zombie twist. Now, don't get me wrong. Corey was definitely screwed by the twist. It mm -hmm. sent back in two people he wanted out the most. Um, it sucked for many, many reasons. But <sighs> expect the unexpected. More importantly, when you're a player, deal with the unexpected after it happens. And as we discussed in Rule 1, you can't just sit back and presume you're going to be safe while everyone else is making moves around you. Just because there was a down week when it came to voting doesn't mean you can take the week off. And that is one big part where being flexible comes into play. You have to roll with the big brother punches. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But I do think, I mean, man, when I think about that whole twist, right, really, Corey... It was truly unfortunate. The only other survivor person there was Sari, who mm -hmm. had her son in there. The one week where there's a weird twist, a zombie twist where people stay in the house, was essentially the person he just had the biggest blow up with and the person mm -hmm. who has mm, arguably the biggest advantage coming into the house. It was Jared. Yeah. I mean, I still think he showed a lot of flexibility in the way that he tried to maneuver and work with Cameron in ways a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't like the happiest. Also, somebody who like, truly is really horrible to him and, and wants to steal his girlfriend away mm -hmm. from him. You know, I mean, I feel like Corey in those situations showed a level of flexibility kind of far beyond his years, which you would expect somebody of his age to be able to really navigate that whole situation. So I don't know. I, I agree with in some parts, but I think for the most part, I think Corey probably was one of the most flexible. Yeah. Most flexible house guests in the house. Okay. In the season. Okay. All right. Well, we could go to the fourth rule, which says players should not let their emotions control them. And this is an interesting one for Corey because he may be the most objective and logical person on Big Brother ever. Um, you know, as we mentioned earlier throughout the game, he would acknowledge to someone when a game move would be good for someone else and bad for him or vice versa more often. Um, sometimes he even told them he wouldn't make a move because they would see it for what it was. You know, like we were talking about earlier, when he should just made the move to find out. Don't assume they know. Just make the move. And if they know, eh, oh, well, even when he was arguing with Jared and Sari, he was also adding in disclaimers about, well, I know you see it this way and I know this. And, you know, I I, I have great respect for you, this. And, you know, and he, he'd add in these just these disclaimers um, and and then he would just, you know, phrase it a certain way. It went even further in that twice he tried to save or he, he helped to save Felicia, even though she was against him. Most people would have allowed their emotions to say, no, I shouldn't do that. But Corey analyzed the situation, determined it was better for him to keep her. Was it? Not really. But that's not the point. The point was, you know, OK, he made a poor decision, but he was making logic based decisions instead of emotional ones. See, I agree with that. I think, again, it's kind of like the before and after, right, mm -hmm. we see of it. I think he was truly kept logical decisions, kept emotion out of his game for the most part, except when it came to that showman's. I think when even the showman's got involved, it became one of those situations where he just kind of, oh, man, I hate to say this, but at points he needed to really set a boundary with him in America. I think it became so overwhelmed in mm -hmm that there were a lot of emotions, right? Emotions are on a full on spectrum. And when other people see that whole spectrum of emotions right there, they become very wary of you. And it's going to bleed into another rule that I don't want to get to yet. The target one. Right. But we saw that he made moves. It seemed like at that some point it wasn't for his, uh, and I hate saying it's like this because I feel like I'm putting more of the onus on America versus Corey. And I don't want to mm. go down that route, but I do think America, which I don't fault her for was playing a lot more individual game while she was in the show match versus Corey kind of for gay, uh, all his individual game components mostly and try to play a show match game. And that was basically mostly for his emotional connection he had with America. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm I mean, kind of at a weird point where I'm like, yes, he was very controlled and logical with his emotions, mm -hmm. but when the showmans came in play, mm. 
Yeah, I think it. I think that there were. Uh, it's interesting what you say about America continued to play her individual game, which ended up, you know, hurting yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, but I, I still think he kept his logic and objectivity. Just it wasn't always there. So, for example, after he and America were nominated, uh, he had been saying in the diary room and to America ahead of time that if Jag had been smart, he would have nominated them. He knew it was the right move. So when Jag did it. Corey reacted calmly and rationally and went to talk to him and in his interviews and everything else, he has said, yes, it was the right move. I was going after them next time. So it was absolutely right. And yes, I mentioned earlier, it was fun to see America tell Jag and Matt to literally F off, but that's not who Corey is. Corey is never going to react that way. However, like you said, yeah, his relationship with America showed the negative side of emotions in this game. And I think the biggest part is he was not prepared for it. He did not come in in his wildest dreams, I don't think, expecting to get into a showman's. And the more time he spent with America, the less time he spent playing the game. Uh, he said in a camera talk to us this week, he got greedy thinking he could focus on both the game and the showman's. And yeah, that's what landed the two of them on the block together and put them put him in a spot where he didn't feel like he could really campaign against her. Mm -hmm. you know, he told Matt, I do care more about America than I do about the game. And he added to Julie after being evicted that he could have done more to really make America feel bad that she basically told everyone to vote her out. But he wouldn't feel right doing that. And no, he, he's absolutely right. I don't know that anyone would have listened to her to, uh, you know, to her anyway. Like, let's say she got so bad that she was like, vote me out. I don't think they. I, I think they would have all said, yeah, that's great. We're going to vote out Corey and she'll mm -hmm. be useless next and we'll get rid of her. Um, now, as we'll discuss more in the sixth rule, um, you know, about that situation. But the point is that because of his emotional connection, he eliminated some potential game moves. I'm not saying he should have tossed his girlfriend aside. He clearly and truly believes this relationship has good potential outside the house. And from my point of view, I hope it does, because I, I think they're a cute couple. I think they're a fun couple. From a life perspective, he made the right decision. My rules are not geared towards a life perspective. They're a game perspective. And as far as winning the game, he allowed his emotions to cloud his ability to fully do that. Yeah, I mean, again, I think this one will kind of bleed into the next rule, so I don't want to go too much into that if you have more to go say ahead. on this nope, one. Go ahead. Well, I think we got to think of lost time, and by that I mean is that you have to be on when you're in the Big Brother house, right? Mm -hmm. When you are in those groups, you need to be able to give face and do what you need to do. The issue is, is when you spend time, and again, this sounds so cold and calculated, and I don't like coming across like that, but you got to yes, think about you lost do. time. That's who you are. <laughs> if, you, if you think about it, when you spend time cuddling with uh, America, when you're – that bond is already there. That's good. You're mm -hmm. spending less time trying to create more bonds with other people. Right? right, like the amount of time, because we see the level of time they spend together. People see that, and it just detracts from everybody else, and it puts such a viewpoint. You can't play the social game as well, is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, that, and we are. You are going into. We should have said this when I said, "Oh yeah, go ahead." Uh, we are moving into the fifth rule, which says players yep. need to pretend to be nice and play the social game. So, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Exactly. No, see, and I think we played a really good social game in a lot of ways. Even, and, I mean, I'm not going to put the things that people already have against him that he can't control, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's fair for me to hold that against him for that. But I do think the game changed again after the show must because he started spending so much time with America on your downtime, right? Like, again, it was like, oh, this is not mm -hmm. game time, it's downtime, but every time is game right. time. It's not during yeah. competitions. It's not just pivotal moments when the veto competition is there. But it would be – see, like when the nominations were already stuck in there, the veto has been not used or not in past mm -hmm. weeks, then he would take the you know the engine off a little bit. He would spend time with America because he's like, okay, I have a little break. The issue is, is when you do that, other relationships are forming back in the back house, and they're watching you two become something that they don't like. And so your ability to play the social game really dwindles. Yeah, it's not like you're a football player who only has certain games and practices, mm -hmm. and then you can spend the rest of your off time with a pop star. Uh, you know, you can, you know, you, this is, this is 24-7 in this game. 
And with that said, I do think he was well liked by almost everyone in the game on a mm-hmm. social level. Even Jag practically professed his love for Corey in the goodbye message after blindsiding him out. But there was always that level of suspicion around him and that altered people's perceptions of him. When he would do something nice, people would be like, oh, he's just doing that for game reasons. You mentioned it with Nicole earlier. You know, he would do something and she'd be like, oh, I know why he's doing that. And and he would have a friendly chat. They'd be looking for these sinister underpinnings of what he'd say. When he'd joke around, they took him seriously. There's a whole alliance that has been discussed in this house that never existed because he made a joke about it. Okay? And there, you know, stuff like that. He would he would joke about Jag winning comps, and Blue would run to Jag and say, he's complaining about you winning too many comps. And so, it, you know, it just happened. And the funny, well, not the funny thing, the thing is, this even extends, like, outside the house. For some reason, there is a legion of Corey haters on the internet. I don't understand it. I don't understand Cameron stands either, but maybe there's a, a, a lot of overlap there. The, the, the Venn diagram may almost be a circle there. Um, he played the game. He was a nice guy. He treated his girlfriend well. He was funny. He was sarcastic in a good way. I don't get it other than to say haters going to hate. Now, perceptions outside the game don't matter to these rules anyway but i was just trying to figure out if anything that the people outside the game could have been perceived by players within the game and i i just don't see it yeah no it's it is strange that's kind of a two-parter right there where it's yes you have these people out here who kind of dislike Corey for really No benign reason. He's been truly one of our most inoffensive house guests by far. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not just this season, but we've had in a long time. I mean, he has called out his own allies. Um, I still remember when it was uh, him and he was working with Cameron at that point. And I I can't remember which week it would have been. It might have been week eight or so. Where Cameron just starts talking some uh, mess about, I think it was Nicole. And he's like, uh, well, it's not talk. You don't need to talk about her like that. Like he called yeah. out people from. And so here's the thing is that like one, I don't know why he has as many haters as he does out there. I just think people just mm-hmm. the fandom can be wild at points. We both know that. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, you, can, you can look at uh, David's uh, TikTok post and you can go into comments. You can find the fandom there. Yeah, and, some of them. Some I just some them. Yeah, but yes. yeah. <laughs> and But I think in the social element here, like you said, and we kind of go back all the way back in there um, in the beginning segment where we talk about that rule mm-hmm. number two is just that people had just a view of Corey that no matter what, he couldn't shake in so many ways. I mean, he truly played a game where he didn't have to pretend to be nice. I mean, he was just a nice guy. I and mean, we talk yeah. about this, I think, almost in comparison to Taylor Hale last uh, season Mm -hmm. where we're like, well, she's not pretending to be nice. She's just nice. That's who she is in person. And I think Corey is that person too. Corey is a very nice guy. And I mean that in the best way. I'm not like, oh, nice guy. Uh, He is a very, he's a gentleman, you know? And in the house, in the game, he kind of conducted himself in a way. And there was kind of a level. He's like, I'm not going to swoop down to this level. And I'm going to try to make everything logical and rational. The issue is, how does that translate into social game? And people viewed him, and this is the big issue, right? People viewed Corey as pretending to be nice versus being nice, because they're like, you're not going to do this without an ulterior motive, versus Corey's like, nah, I just want to play, you know, a fun game with y'all. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I mean, that's perfect there, yeah. Um, In a camera talk this week, Corey said something that I believe his brother Zach uh, said similarly when he was recently a guest on uh, Rob's podcast, which, and, and this goes back to something you said earlier, and I said, oh, I've Got some here about this in a later room. Corey isn't typically this social of a person. And Corey specifically said he doesn't have it in him to deal with people all the time and he'd rather be alone. And so, like you said, this is this game has gone on for two and a half months. Imagine being in a house stuck there with all these people needing to work to be social for months on end. In a way, it's no wonder he took a pause during zombie week because he probably needed it. Mm hmm. Now, I'm not excusing it because we already discussed that, but he was working a lot harder to be sociable than I think some of the other people needed to. He's a nice guy, but nice and sociable are not synonyms. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a a good point we put together. The game is so long, and I think for Corey, right? 
you got some unusual hits in this game where not just zombie week, but you found out that you guys think you're making jury, right? Yeah. And then boom, you're not making jury. Mm. It's going to be a shortened jury. That just adds a whole level of stress for it. And I know there's people who are like going to be crying. I'm crying like, yes. And I wish I do like, you know, a short, smaller jury. Mm -hmm. Make these house kits work for it. Right. But I also think that once you get to, what is it, day 72, and you still might not make jury, that's just such a level added stress on these house kits who've been working so hard um, to that point. I almost wish it's one of those things where I wish it was told to them before. <laughs> now you got a down. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You saw I don't know. What so something, I I'm sorry, for, for listeners only, last week, uh, Ovi was saying something, and he, he suddenly there was a thumbs up. And then this time he said something and there was a thumbs down. Thumbs so down. I don't know. Apparently the the uh, recording website that we use has thoughts about what you're saying. I know. It's wild. And the week before that, we had fireworks before my head. Yes. I just – sorry, weird tangent, but this is happening just only once each time, every time we record weekend, it's, and only yeah. on me, and not you, David. Yeah, um, and I don't – I and I don't – like I don't think I could do this if I wanted to. I don't see a way. Like I anyway, it's just it's funny. That, yeah, that it's, it's so. <laughs> um, well, thank you, our recording service uh, website for yes. the. I think they were disagreeing with me actually on that one. Um, but I think that sorry, my train of thought. Uh, back yeah. to it though. I think that um, the game being so long, right, and you have jury not told to you when it's going to be. That's a big hit on mm -hmm. Corey's mental fortitude. And then you have zombie week. Basically, you're two people you really want out of the house, and one person you individually essentially orchestrated to get out of the house mm -hmm. are now back in the house, and now you have to play with at least with one of them. It just takes so many hits after hits, and I think right. to emphasize the point you were making prior to this is that um, at some point you get tired. And like we say, you want to be on and on and on. But as humans, it's tough to be on and on. You might, might yeah. need a break. And that was for Corey. Yeah. All right. Well, we can go to the sixth rule, which warns against being too much of a threat. And to cut to the chase, Corey was the biggest threat to Jag and Matt. He knew it. They knew it. Uh, you know, uh, they even discussed it. Like we said, they just had different ideas about when they would go after each other. One thing we've talked about and seen before on Big Brother and even more on Survivor is the question of when one threat should go after another threat. You don't want to do it too soon because then the threat dominoes start and you could be next. You don't want to wait too long or someone else will get the jump and take you out. In Big Brother, it's a little different if you are specifically a comp threat because of the way the game favors such people, especially this season. But all of this was kind of hanging in the air this week once cameron was gone it was a question of what would happen next at first it appeared they'd all work together to get rid of blue and jag wanted to keep Corey in america around so people would focus on them instead of him and matt as he said the whole house was anti Corey. remember this was the same person who said they were all he was in with everybody um so it was better to keep Corey. he said but then america inexplicably did what she did and it made jag and matt realize that they needed to move first we don't know for sure as i've mentioned that jag would have you know wouldn't have realized it anyway uh but he and matt knew it had to happen soon it was always just a matter of timing yeah and i think it even goes back prior to them right we see jared really focusing on Corey because he's like oh I don't trust Corey and then he's like oh he's in a showman's where he Corey already had a huge threat on his head uh from the beginning of the game and it continues so and then you add America into it. I mean it was so big that the other showman's in the house no one really cared too much about Jared and Blue to target them I mean they got targeted but mostly for Jared uh not the showman's itself right they, they didn't even try working together to be like oh we as showman should work no they thought they were such a threat that they need to be targeted I mean also I think it's pretty incredible to be such a threat in the house when um you haven't won a competition barely. That, that between yes. those showmances, competition wins are very small. I think they might have one win together or two wins. Um, and ultimately, in a house where you have people winning back to back to back to back, mm -hmm. interesting choices. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, Corey being seen as a threat was nothing new. It has been going on all game. It's just he wasn't seen as the immediate threat compared to others. So, kind of like you said with the comps, that was it, it kept him like. He was the low level, he was the mid-level threat that was always there. 
you know, kind of like when mm -hmm. you, you know, there's some buzzing in, you know, where you live and eventually you get used to it and it's always in the background. But then eventually you're like, my God, what is that buzzing noise? We've got to get yeah. rid of it. And, you know, so, you know, when Jag claimed he'd been protecting Corey, I don't see it that way at all. They were all working together to get rid of other people, some of whom were threats to all of their games, like Cameron. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but nobody ever forgot about Corey. And when this week came, it wasn't just Jag who pounced. Sari was pushing things as well to get the, you know, those two pairs going against each other while she just keeps sneaking forward. Uh, uh, she also uh, was telling Matt about how Corey was so much more dangerous than she is, for example. And America has been using him as a shield, etc. Corey hurt his own cause by consistently insisting to everyone that the final competitions tended to be more mental. One, this is wrong. Taryn has repeated numerous times why this is wrong. Uh, you know, if you're thinking seasons ago, <laughs> yes. If you're looking recent, it's wrong. Yeah. Second, why the heck would the guy who has, is seen as more intelligent and less physical tell people that the late game comps are more intelligence based and less physical? It, it doesn't make any it, yeah, it goes back to what I said before about him being overly objective and truthful. And don't do it. Stop giving away that information. And ironically, his truth was actually false. I just wish he just played himself down a little bit more, right? Yeah. He was so truthful. And here's the thing. He was, so, he was really humble. It was just that everything they had a perspective of him was that he was a mastermind and he never said he was a mastermind, but he just never tried to really ultimately play it down as much as he should have within this house. Right. I think any logical, rational person can be like, look at the numbers and be like, hmm, all right, let's look at this stuff here and there. And you would also think that maybe um, America might be a bigger threat than Corey beforehand, but they still mm -hmm. viewed Corey as that person versus him being an ally for him. That was a big issue is that they yeah. couldn't create some form of – trust with him because his individual game was they haven't seen it for a long time they're just you know yeah. tied to america so i think also one of the concerns was if we get america out does Corey come try raging with us do we have right. any allies it was really a toss-up and it comes down to the ultimate thing is that if you're not able to make yourself look less of a threat and also if you're not able to or you're wanting to make the person next mm -hmm. to a bigger threat you really are in a no man's land um, you then kind of give away any autonomy of your game this last mm -hmm. week, which he kind of did in that in situation because he's not campaigning against America. He's not trying to lower his threat level very right. much. So you just have to wait and hope it's a flip of a coin. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we can go to the seventh rule, which says to trust almost nobody. Corey obviously trusted America, uh, which, you know, yeah, he should, given the status of their relationship. The problem is that he tried for months to get her to stop trusting the wrong people, and she never did. More to the point of Corey himself, he trusted people to think logically like he did, which we've already discussed was a problem. Most people, like it or not, most people don't weigh two sides of an issue like it's a debating team score. Most don't talk everything through, even though it could end up hurting them. Most don't put aside their emotions and objectively walk through the possibilities. If people did these things, social media and the world in general would be a very different and better place. But they don't. And especially in a game, especially in the Big Brother house, you cannot trust people to do what's best, sometimes even for themselves. I mean, Corey saw that even in the last few days. He was working a plan that would help Suri and Felicia but Felicia was so anti Corey that she ruined it by revealing it to Bowie Jane. That's what led to the whole crying thing. Saria is over here going, oh, my God, Felicia, what are you doing? And Felicia's like, ah, he's going to lie. He's lying. And it's like he was lying to help you in the future. Sometimes, no matter what you do, you just can't help other people. Yeah, I mean. It comes down to is that you have to be able to play the same board game. Like the board has to be the same for each person to be able to connect with them in the rational ways. With Big Brother, we always say perspective is a reality. So it doesn't matter of how you rationalize with them. 
if they are playing a different board game, if they're playing the game of life, you know, that board game versus your game of Monopoly, yeah. it's just not going to compute. I mean, in some ways, and it might be impossible to figure out what game they might be playing. And that's yeah. the hardest thing. I think for me, I remember during my time, I found it so frustrating because I think for me, I was trying to base some of my moves on what somebody else would rationally see. And it would be what would be best in their benefit. But you forget that Big Brother has a, wide plethora of people people from different perspectives where mm -hmm. they might not play the game rationally they might play the game emotionally or it's just a different game of yours so it comes to conflict to figure out what's the best thing to do forward that happened right here for him because when he wants to trust people with this information it has to also be understood that they're going to feel it's beneficial for them. And that yeah. was something that wasn't the case. Um, he would have probably been better to trust literally nobody than trust the people he did. Yes. Yes. All right. Next up is Appendix A, which discusses the jury phase. Uh, what are your thoughts here for, you know, as as he heads to the jury and how that will impact the the end of the game here? You know, I think it's <laughs> for the silver lining of it. I think that we talked about Cameron being the first jury member, right? Hmm. Um, yeah. And we were like, I wonder how much he's going to influence the jury. And I don't think he's going to influence the jury too much as much. Mm -hmm. um, and I think more than anything, I think Corey now being the stopgate there, I think he's going to be a very good, rational, logical head to help steer jury conversations in the future. Um, I imagine that he won't be bitter. I really don't think so. I think. Right, I agree. I, I really think he would vote for anybody up there um, if they give the right argument. But I do think that um, he might be biased towards America, obviously. Oh, I think I think there. if America gets there, he you know, I don't I, that is the one place he will not be completely objective. If America gets there, I, I mean, she has his vote no matter what. Yeah, I agree. So I but I do think this is, you know, this is a plus in Jag and Matt's hat. I think he's mm -hmm. going to view them as that person. I think maybe also he's one of the few jury members I think would give a little bit more credence to Sari's game. Um, Cause here's the thing is I think a lot of them have viewed Sari as a really great mastermind in a lot of ways, but I worry that they might view Jag and Matt as the heroes of the second yes. half of the game because they have dominated and played versus Sari who has really from our perspective navigated beautifully mm -hmm. in a really tricky situation, but it might not translate as well to the other jury members. But I wonder if Corey can advocate for that long story yeah. short. I don't think Corey will be better. No, I agree with you a hundred percent. I do think it's interesting because he said, you know, in some of his camera talking, he talked about Jag um, and it seems like he's talking, you know, Jag and Matt. And it's like, why aren't you talking about Sari? Sari is the person you should see of all people. Now, maybe in his downtime, he will more come to realize that. Um, obviously, I don't think Matt and Jag will both make it to the end together. So that, you know, will be interesting if it's like a Sari and Jag or a Sari and Matt. Hmm. Um, and so I would hope that he will come to his senses and favor Sari in a situation like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have to see. But you're right. We... Um, what was I going to say? He he's he is going to be that wall between Cameron and everyone else. And yeah. So, you know, hopefully won't let Cameron poison everyone. So with that in mind, uh, it is time to wrap things up here. What are your final thoughts about Corey? I think Corey was very fun to watch i think he was really impressive to see a young guy go into the big brother house navigate how he did um and be in some hard tricky situations and make it out you know i um i'm really proud of the way he played the game and i do think that he does well i mean he's he's one of those players that if you get them past the first two weeks i think he does a really good way you play in the game what i'd like to see him play maybe outside of a showman yes um did he make mistakes in the game that really kind of took him down and yes but there really wasn't one specific mistake we can point mm -hmm. out as a culmination of multiple things and i don't think it makes him out to be a bad big brother player i think he's a good big brother player and if anything i think if Corey was one of the people to return the, to the house give him a couple more years of experience i could see Corey making it to the final two um really impressed with the way he played but at the end of the day i do think we saw a stark difference between his before game when he was mm -hmm. an individual player and then his showman's game and ultimately i think that is what led to him being evicted Okay. Yeah, I agree. Corey was a very fun player who I hope comes back again. 
Uh, he was a fan with strategy, game knowledge, humor, sarcasm, and it turned out even a love life. Uh, but he was also immediately seen as being the schemer archetype. No matter what he did, there were certain people in the house who assumed he was up to something. We don't know what, but something. And once again, people got it into their heads that he was a sneaky mastermind. And when that happened, they started ascribing all sorts of conspiracies to him. Kind of like some fans do with Big Brother overall, actually. Um, was Corey over scheming? Not nearly as much as others thought. But he was perceived that way from the beginning, and it stuck, no matter what he did. Sometimes people thought the whole house was against him for it. Sometimes they thought he was with everyone. Sometimes they somehow thought both simultaneously. Corey certainly strategized and made some big moves. But he was also over-honest, which worked against him because people knew what he was thinking, and he helped to clarify to them what they should be thinking. Mm -hmm. Part of that was they should be thinking of getting him out before he got them. Still, things seemed to be working until America ignored his repeated pleas to not provide information to untrustworthy people. She'd had issues before, but had always survived. This time would be different as it turned the light on in Jag and Matt's heads and made them realize this was the time to strike. As we discussed, would they have realized it anyway? Maybe. Probably. We'll never know for sure. We know it happened, and that appeared to be the final straw. But there was already a lot going on beforehand to set up the situation where it could happen. Corey was seen as an overschemer, a snake, since the very beginning of the game. Despite the passage of two and a half months, he was still seen that way. He just couldn't get out of that cliche image that some people had of him. And part of the reason was, I'm not sure he really tried, and some things he did reinforced it, even as he was actually doing the opposite. Part of doing the opposite was being so honest, including even to people he knew he'd be targeting. To him, it was setting up a game board. To them, it was announcing his intentions so they could strike first. And that's exactly what happened. He planned to go after them next week, but they beat him to the punch because he or America or a combination of both telegraphed their move. As I said earlier, it's always difficult to figure out when one threat should go against another. But for all his strategy, Corey made it just a little too easy for Matt and Jag. And that is why Corey lost. Well put, as always, David. Well, thank you. All right. Well, before we continue into our spoiler-free predictions, remember uh, that if you want all of our spoilery full thoughts uh, and bluntness and everything else, fun, you know, fun ideas, we are all over social media. Yes, we are. You can find me talking about Big Brother and so many other topics on Twitter at, at the Ovi Kabir on Instagram. I'm at Ovi Kabir on TikTok. I'm a, uh, excuse me on TikTok. I'm at Basmati Boy. And David is truly all over the place. You can track him down in a number of ways, but most easily you can go to his link tree at linktree slash David Bloomberg, or you can find him on most text based social media like Twitter and Blue Sky at, at David Bloomberg. And on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Threads, he is at David Bloomberg TV. Yes. And uh, yeah, so you can go, like you said, to Linktree slash David Bloom. There's a dot before the EE in Linktree. I have uh, added a few more graphics to make my uh, Linktree look a, a little less dull. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I have so many different things that sometimes Ovi forgets what I am <laughs> and tags me uh, slightly uh, differently in, in different I places. Do. Uh, so, so yeah, I know it's confusing and it's, it, it's not my fault. Blame them. <laughs> Uh, but on the different video platforms, uh, since the beginning of Big Brother, I have been posting three or four videos per day at all of them, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram. Um, you know, there's and it's a combination of things like yesterday. I posted one Big Brother, one Survivor, one The Traders Canada and one House of Villains. And so you get this mix, uh, you know, and from Big Brother. It could be from the show. It could be from the live feeds. You never know what, what could pop up there, except I hope it's entertaining and funny or informative and something like that. Uh, but speaking of all those other shows, I have been, uh, of course, podcasting, Double Duty, Why Blank Lost. Uh, already my uh, Survivor edition is out with uh, Jessica Lewis, and we had a special guest, uh, Lindsay Carmine from Survivor 43. And I, I don't want to spoil it, but even if for some reason you don't know what happened on Survivor this week, but 
even though it might seem like it is a simple answer this week, we had such an in-depth conversation. We went and looked at all these different aspects, not just of the person who lost this week, but also the game in general and things that happened there. So that was a real interesting conversation. I think I'm, I'm not biased at all, obviously, but uh, so even if you're thinking, well, you know, we know what happened and it was obvious. No, nothing is ever that obvious. And we, we went through it all. Uh, I also, I'm separately podcasting about the Traders Canada, and that is on the Tradar podcast. It's T-R-A-I-D-A-R. And you can find that um, by searching on your usual podcast host, or there's also audio on YouTube. So, uh, so yeah, I am, like it says, all, all over the place. Um, <laughs> oh, see, I'm so all over the place that even Ovi's dog is looking for me. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> That's fine. I thought the timing was good. All right. Moving to our predictions. As I mentioned, we keep them spoiler free. So we won't discuss who the new HOH is, uh, even though this one is visible, not invisible. And once again, I wrote these before the feeds even came back on. Looking at the glimpse we saw of the HOH comp, it doesn't appear to be particularly physical for a change. I mean, that's hard to say, uh, but Jag being able to compete again is very, very, very annoying. Add several more varies there. I hope he doesn't win. And just because I don't want him to, and because I think that this, what I'm about to say would be the most amusing outcome, I'm going to predict America wins. Uh, the question then becomes whether she immediately turns on Matt and Jag or decides to pretend to be with them as, you know, follow up from some of her later live feed conversations with Jag. If she turns on them right away, she runs the risk of being sent out next week by or the following week by whoever's left. And, you know, depending on the veto, both of them could end up staying and then she's in real trouble. If she pretends to be with them, they might still take a shot at her next week. But at least there's a, sh a chance they won't. So I think she's going to pretend to be with them and nominate Blue and someone else, probably Felicia, with Blue as the target. I suspect the rest of the house would be okay with that. And as long as Blue doesn't win veto again, uh, things would go fine. So that will be my prediction that Blue will be the next juror. And yes, it is absolutely 100% influenced by what I want to happen. Um, now, of course, there will be a double eviction. If they're smart, the other players, this is when they'll take a shot at Jag and Matt. As long as neither of them win HOH, you know, they should be able to do this. Since it's a double, it's less likely to be physical. So anyone could theoretically win. So again, I'm going to go with what I want to happen. And I think Sari is going to finally win one. And she is going to make the big move to put them both up. Matt is still wow. more well liked, and I think the house will foolishly vote out Jag instead. So my predictions are blue and Jag. Oh, well, unfortunately, I think I'm going to go the other way in this. Um, I think blue is bound to win one finally. All right, it is her time coming up, so I'm thinking blue is wins she, though. Probably... I mean, it's not a random guessing time game. You know? I just think that blue has it in her to win a competition, and she's been there, she's close. Yeah. And I think she wants to, I think she wants to cement her way mm -hmm. into the end in some shape or form or help the team. I think blue wins something, all right. Regardless of it, I think we have Felicia on the block with America. I think America goes home this week. I think in a double, we have actually one of the boys, Matt or Jag, because if they're still around this first week, I, mm -hmm. I think one of them is winning it in the double, Ilim. They win it, and then they're going to send Blue packing. So I think we're going to get a double America, then Blue there, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get a final four of Felicia, Sari, Matt, and Jag. Um, and I think it, we'll see how that ends. It would be kind of funny. And Bojane, I forgot. Uh, yeah. Final five. Yeah. Sorry. It would be kind of funny, and we wouldn't really get to see a lot of it because it's a double, but to see, like, Blue, like, ha-ha, I got both of the showmance out, and then her immediately follow, Boom. like, half an hour later. So, but, yeah. you know, like I said, we wouldn't really get to soak that in, uh, uh, you know. But, yeah, so there, there we have it as far as our predictions. 
there it is. And before we end, I want to make sure to encourage people to check out our RHAP patron program at robhasawebsite.com slash patron. Rob has so many patron-only podcasts for Big Brother and Survivor that I've lost count. So jump on board and support shows like ours and everything on the network by becoming a patron at robhasawebsite.com slash patron. And make sure you're subscribed to all the RHAP podcasts by going to our YX Lost feed page or subscribe directly to the RHAP Big Brother feed at robhasawebsite.com slash big brother. You will, of course, find a ton of great content like the daily live feed updates, the stock watch and more. I, you've heard us reference here. I'll talk about, well, Taryn said this or uh, Kirsten McKinnis said this or Zach said this. Those are all coming from that Big Brother feed. Uh, so, you know, you can. Can, you know, we will obviously still talk about it. We act as kind of a compilation service for the big hits, but you should definitely subscribe as well. And finally, we want to thank Scott and Sapir and the whole RJP and reality TV wrap ups behind the scenes team for all the work they do editing and posting and everything else. We really appreciate everything you do to get our voices from our microphones to your ears. And finally, thanks for everyone who's watching and listening. We really appreciate your comments week in and week out. Hope you enjoyed this weekend, this next week with this double elimination, um, elimination, double eviction. Sorry, I'm mm -hmm. still on the challenge uh, roller coaster. Um, <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We're going to get to do a two parter right there. And so make sure you don't miss that and uh, let us know your thoughts. And if there's anything you think Corey could have done to stay in the house and not be evicted. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you very much, Ovi, for joining me again once this week. Once again this week. Um, you know, we will be back in seven days to talk about two people. I will be back uh, probably a day sooner. Or, you know, if you find me elsewhere, uh, honestly, you can find me somewhere every single day of the week. Uh, so, uh, but looking forward to hearing from people. Uh, and we will see you here again in seven days. Bye.